Hi everyone, Professor Bergasser here. Uh, in this video, we're gonna look at a couple problematic cases that have popped up in some of our archival reductions. Uh, we're gonna kind of group these together and sort of how to, how to deal with lots of different things. Um, one is gonna be looking at uh, log sheets that might be incomplete or hard to, to figure out what's the calibrator star, what's the target. And then we're also gonna look at a case on a night where uh, we didn't, the observers didn't use an A0 star for calibration, they used an F star, which is a different type of star. Um, we're going to see how we can uh, still do the reductions using XTEL core basic, but a slightly different mode than we use for the asteroid reduction. All right, so the data set that we're going to look at is uh, a data set from 2001, June 19th. Um, here's the log sheet uh, here, completely unmarked. And I think a few things will immediately pop up as problematic. First of all, there are no source names. <laughs> so how do we know which source to look at? Um, and, and how to divide these up if all the sources are just uh, the default object observed. Um, there's also some missing information about observer names, but that's, that's not big of a deal. Um, and then if you scroll through here, you'll see that all of these files, um, there's not a single flat or arc, uh, arc frame. Um, so we have no calibration data from this night. I'm not quite sure what happened. Perhaps the calibration data was obtained at an earlier time and end up in a different part of the archive. So these kind of things can happen. Um, and so it's good to sort of look at a few ways to explore how to address those problems. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to organize my log sheet a little bit um, and at least start to group some of these sources together and then figure out what it is I actually have. So again, when you're organizing your log sheet, I like to just use some color backgrounds and I'm focusing on what are the RA index and what are the integration times. So you can see, for example, the first 16 frames here are all roughly the same RA and DEC and the same integration time. So that constitutes a set. Um, if I go down to the next grouping, looks like this continues on to about 1741 or so. So that constitutes a set. I'll go down to the next set, which is at a relatively similar position. Um, and I can group the, those, uh, looks like eight files or so. Uh, and we'll color that set in. And I'll just do one more. Hopefully you can see the pattern here. Again, I'm looking at the RA index and the integration time. And notice the integration time is the same here, but the air mass is very different. And obviously the coordinates are different. So that definitely constitutes a different source. And that looks like that extends down to there. Now, there's one more thing I'll point out that I noticed as I was preparing this video um, is if I go back to this second set here, you see we have frames between 17 and 35. And if you do the math on that, you will realize that that is an odd number of files. That's a 19 files instead of say 18 or 20. Um, probably hard to catch that right away, but you would find it as you're doing the reductions. So we'll see how we catch that in the reductions. But let me first show, point out that um, if, I, if I scroll here, you can see the ABBA pattern, ABBA, that continues until these three files are all A's. So something happened where we got an extra A file here, and it could be that the observer just hit just to get one exposure as opposed to repair. Um, in any case, we're gonna have a problem with this extra A in the middle here. So I'm going to just highlight that, but I'm also gonna show how we could have seen that happening as we're doing the reductions. Now this is fine. I've broken up my sources into different targets and you know you can do the extraction and the combined specter fairly easily with those. But I do need a little bit more information on how to work with this. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Simbad database to do that. So if I copy the coordinates here and I've actually already done it, but we'll do it again. Um, when I put in these coordinates, what we find is this source HD157968. And we get the F, the spectra type is an F7 star. So just for completeness, and again, you are free to edit your uh, log files as you see fit. I'm gonna go ahead and put that name in there, match the values in only, and copy that down through here. And um, I'll put a note here that this is spectral type equals F7. Now let's go to this next source. And again, I'll copy and paste that coordinate in there. And now we've got a different star, this star, IRS 17388-1657. Uh, there's no spectral type here. Uh, so we won't have that information. 
But I would say that, you know, when I look at the exposure time here, this is a relatively long exposure time for a prism mode observation. So I'm going to guess that this is likely to be the uh, science target for this set. So I will say so in my notes. And um, I have to copy the names through here. And then um, just for completeness, let's look at this last source here. And uh, I'll put that coordinate in. And we find that this is a, another F7 star, um, HD 157968. Uh, in fact, it's the same star that we had here. We could have confirmed that by just looking at the coordinates. So it seems that we've got a, um, uh, this F7 star observed a couple of times. That's likely in order to span the range of air masses of this object in between. Let's make a note that this is an F7 star. Um, just for completeness, if we go to this next one, it's clearly this is a completely different part of the sky, a very different air mass. And so if we're looking for that object calibrator set, it looks like we're stuck between these two sources. And this is clearly the science target, whereas our calibrator star is not an A0 star. Now it's close. Now remember our spectral sequence goes O, B, A, F, G. So F7 is pretty close to A0, but not quite. So, and we have to be careful that the X tel core function is assuming an A0 star as its model. So if we put in a different type of star, that has the potential of actually doing the wrong calibration because we have the wrong model for our star. So we're gonna see how we can use a different calibration uh, function in order to analyze this, all right? But in any case, getting back to this log sheet, these kind of, uh, you know, sometimes incomplete logs will happen. And so it's good to, as you're organizing your data, just kind of go through and again, color code each source, separating by source and exposure time, uh, and sometimes instrument mode if that's different. And then doing a little research with Simbad to see if you can find out what kind of source it is. All right, now let's turn to the actual reduction part. Now we've got some of the logs in order. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce some of these data and I've created my uh, reduction folder in my reductions folder here. I've got 2001.0619. In fact, what I should probably do to be better about this is to make sure to rename this to 2001.0619-2 because that's the specific data that I'm working with. So I'll see in that and you can see I've made my cows and proc folders. Uh, in my terminal window, I'm gonna go ahead and CD into that folder and start up my IDL and start up XFX tool. Now, remember we had another problem here. <laughs> and that problem was that we didn't have a calibration set in this data set. So that's not very helpful. We do need those calibration frames to do our extraction. Well, fortunately there was observations done the next night. I, and I looked up the logs for 2001 and fortuitously, it was done with the low res mode and with the same slit. You can see that the slit that was used in this data is the 0.8 arc second slit. And for this next night, it uses the same exact mode. So since we're just one night off, it's the same setting. And to be honest, the, the low resolution mode is pretty forgiving in terms of uh, uh, doing calibrations uh, between different nights. We can just go ahead and extract this calibration set and use it for our own. Now, it turns out you can do this very easily just from the regular folder you're in. All I have to do is replace my data folder with the one for that next night. And then if I go into this CALS frame, I'm going to use the calibrations, this last set here, 2001 to 2006. So let's go ahead and put that in. And just make calibration frames. And this will store the calibration frames in the CALS folder for my 2001.0619-2 working catalog, because that's, that's where I'm saving things off. So disaster averted, we could just use the calibration set from another night. Now, before I go on, we should make sure we set this back to our original data folder, which is 2001.0619-2. And now we're ready to do extractions. So let's go ahead and extract the um, first pair here. So let, let's, let's, there's another question here. So let's first 
since it's the easy one, let's extract our IRAS source here. And as usual, it's good to start with the first pair. We'll read in our flat field. And you can see that got read in and made in the right place, no problem. We'll load the image up, make our spatial profiles. Looks like this was actually a pretty good night because those are pretty sharp. So we can find our apertures. We're going to use the aperture positions uh, because this is a faint source to trace the objects. And we'll show the apertures. That actually looks pretty good. We can go ahead and extract the spectra. All right, and so now if I was to just go ahead and blindly put in the rest of the numbers, 19 through 35, the program would immediately say, wait a second, you don't have an even number of exposures, you have 19. So that's when I would go back and say, let's look closely at our numbers. And indeed, look at that, we've got three A's in a row. So if I just ignore this one A frame, I can reduce the rest of these files and we can write that in our notation here as going from 19 to 28, comma, 30 to 35. And just run through all steps and it's gonna run right through and, and extract everything. All right. So let's give that a moment to run. And while it's doing that, let's go ahead and look at, uh, we wanna reduce our standard star. And um, again, we have kind of two sets here. So let's reduce each of these sets separately. Let's look at one through 16 first. And we are still chugging along on this other side here. There we go. So again, I'm going to bring up the first pair, same calibration files, load those images in make our spatial profiles and very sharp. Here we can trace the star spectrum directly because it's a bright enough star, show our apertures and extract the spectra. Now, we have a bit of a problem here because these spectra appear to be saturated, a little bit too bright. Uh, now, sometimes the observer figures that out. So let's go and look at this second set of standard spectra. Let's look at 36 to 37. 36 to 37. Oops. Load the image. Same steps. Make special profiles. Looks like these are a little bit offset, and it may be because they purposely changed the focus in order to make this a little, uh, little bit uh, fainter. So we'll increase our aperture radius and now extract the spectra. And none of those red flags of saturation are showing up. So it looks like we can use this second set of data and I'll go ahead and start that running. All right, do all steps. And meanwhile, back in my logs, I'm gonna make a note that uh, these first files are saturated not moving, all right? And you know you can also flag these by color if you, if you wanna be absolutely clear about this. All right, so uh, we've now got a science target and a standard star. You can see how that extract is going. I think it's already done, all right? We can go ahead and do our XCOM spec for those data, oops. All right, in our proc folder. And again, we are uh, combining for our main targets 17 through 28 and then 30 through 35 because we didn't extract 29. Load those up. We got lots of spectra here. Let's scale those down. And since this is a faint target, we're not going to use the correct spectral shape. We're just going to output the combined spectrum. I'm also going to skip the, uh, the um, pruning for the moment. So it's pretty good combined spectrum. Uh, and then we'll put in our standard, which was 36 to 45. Load those up, scale those. And since this is a bright star, I can run the compare the um, correct spectral shape to tighten that up. And we have our combined spectra, so that's all good. So we didn't really need to know what the sources were in order to do those two steps. Ah, still have a little bit of an issue here for some of those extra points. So again, we might want to go back and um, explore some of the other data to see if there might be a fainter set of sources. We're going to leave that for now.
All right, so now the next step is the XTEL core, but remember, we don't have an A0 star for a calibrator. We have an F7, it's a different kind of star. So instead of XTEL core, we're going to run XTEL core basic. All right, and we've seen this format before in our asteroid data. I'm going to bring up our combined files. There we go, load those up. Good air mass combination. And in this case, we're going to get the shift first. And it looks like we could definitely do some work on this. So I'm going to do a SS on either side here and do an auto find. And it will scroll through the numbers so it gets as flat as possible. And that looks like our best match. So we will accept that. Now, in the asteroid case, all we did was we didn't want to restore the continuum because we're just looking at a ratio. Here, we actually want the fluxes of our star. So we're going to keep this as yes. And now we need two pieces of information. One is the black body temperature, and one is the V magnitude. Well, the V magnitude we could get from the SIMBAD database. So if I go back here, select my coordinate, put that in. I think that's the same one. Yeah, the same one. All right. So um, our V magnitude is 6.206. So we can put that in. Now for the black body temperature, we need the black body temperature corresponds to an F7 star. Unfortunately, there's this nice website um, uh, that I just Googled uh, from someone's uh, website, uh, someone's uh, uh, course page uh, that gives the main sequence spectral types and their estimated temperatures. And if we go down here, we can see our F7 star here corresponds to a temperature of about 6,400 Kelvin. So that's good enough for us. We're going to put that number in, 6,400. Um, and by the way, this is much cooler than an A0 star. So again, have, if we use X Telcor, we would be very off in our calibration because we use a model that's 10,000 Kelvin as opposed to the temperature, which is 6,400 Kelvin. So with the black body temperature, which determines the shape of the standard, and the V magnitude, which turns the absolute flux, we now have enough information to properly to alert calibrate our source. So we're gonna save this off. And we can either use the name that's here or preferably uh, you wanna use our shorthand notation for the coordinates. So we have 1741 minus 1658. So I'm gonna put J 1741 minus 1658 and the date 2001-0619. And I'm not adding the dash two here because uh, this is a unique observation for the state. So we're okay uh, for that. And I'll construct that character spectrum and, and there it is. It's actually a pretty featureless uh, of probably relatively hot star. Maybe this is actually another F star could be, um, but you can see that most of the telluric absorption is completely corrected. There's some, maybe some residuals through here uh, that's not perfect, but this is pretty good. So. We've gotten a good correction to our data and um, using a calibrated star that's different than an A0. All right, so that's it for this. And again, you're gonna see some of these kind of things come up. Uh, it's either because the archive hasn't collected the data perfectly, or when the observers were observing, perhaps uh, they didn't re record the information or perhaps something happened where they had to stop observing. So it's good to kind of see these errors come up uh, and how to address them. And, I want to emphasize the first thing you want to do is really organize the data first. And then once you get it organized, you can decide how you're going to calibrate um, and, and what, which files to actually reduce. All right, good luck with your reductions, and we'll see you next time.